Make your snack. Set up for CircuitPython programming with the Circuit Playground Bluefruit. Follow along guide at bit.ly slash cpb setup. Hello programmers, so we are going to set up a Circuit Playground Bluefruit edition so that we can program in CircuitPython and we're going to set up the Moo editor to use that as well. A follow along document is at bit.ly slash cpb setup. And if you type in that address, you'll go to this Google Doc that you see right here. A quick note to show you right from the start. Uh, Mac users, if you are working with a CPXB every now and then, certain actions will present you with this message here, disk not ejected properly. Never worry about that message if it shows up. It's just something that happens when using the CPB on your Mac. Now let's first make sure that our Circuit Playground Loofer is working. So why don't you plug in one end of your USB cable into your computer, your Mac or your PC, and plug the other end into the CPB. When you do this on a new CPB, what you should see is this rainbow pattern. You'll also see a little green light on that indicates that the board is getting power. And always make sure that your micro USB cable is a data cable, not just a charge cable. Otherwise, things won't work. Now we're going to download the version of CircuitPython for our board. So you can copy this URL. This brings you to the Adafruit Learn Guide for the Circuit Playground Bluefruit to install our update CircuitPython. And scroll down the page until you see this green link that says download the latest version of CircuitPython for this board via circuitpython.org. From this page, click on the download.uf2 file now. Remember where you save that, I saved mine to the desktop. Now before I copy this file over, I'm going to double click on the center reset button in the middle of my CPB. What that's going to do is it's going to turn all of the lights green and my circuit playground is going to be mounted to my computer almost as if I plugged in a USB drive. It'll have the name CPlayBT boot and then I can click on this UF2 file. Don't be alarmed if your UF2 file has a slightly different name. I recorded this when only an earlier version was available. Drag it into CPlayBT boot and that will copy over the latest version of CircuitPython. Remember, we're just clicking and dragging from the desktop into CPlayBT boot. Don't double click the UF2 file and try to open it up. Now this is going to unmount CPlay boot and if you're a Mac user, you'll get a message about the disk not being ejected properly. Just ignore the message. Now return to the installation document and scroll down to the area that says update the CircuitPython libraries on your CPB. Grab this URL, copy it, return to the web, and paste it in. This will take you to Adafruit's page for the CircuitPython libraries. Just scroll down this page until you see the green link that says click here for the latest Adafruit CircuitPython library bundle release. The first button you click on should match the UF2 file that you downloaded. So mine was version 5. I'm going to download bundle version 5 right here. Save that to my desktop. And once the zip file is done, I'm going to return to the desktop and double click on zip. The zip file is just a compressed version of the folder with all the files inside of it. Now here's one word of caution. Some of our Windows users have something called WinZip that pops up and asks you to register. This is just some bloatware that was installed on your PC probably when you bought it. You don't need this, so you should delete it. So Windows users, if you see this, what you should do is uninstall the WinZip application. You can Google on how to do that. Follow the instructions on a page like this and then you should be able to right click and extract your zip file. So the zip file is gonna create a folder with the same name and we can actually delete the .zip file. We don't need that anymore. Now, when I double click inside of this to look at what's inside of that folder, I see a bunch of things. Some example files you can explore later on on your own. And I also see this lib file. Now inside the lib file, if I expand it, I see a ton of other different files here. Now all of the files that we see actually extend the capabilities of CircuitPython so that they can do lots of different things with lots of different hardware. Because out of the box, Python doesn't necessarily know about the Circuit Playground Express and all of the things that you can do on the CPX. So these library files allow us to extend Python on. Now we don't need all of those files and in fact everything in this lib folder won't fit on our device but we will need a subset of what's in here for our tutorials. Now I'm going to rename my lib folder lib-complete just so that I know where all of my original files are and you might have to right click on this folder to get the rename option. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another lib folder that's going to be an empty one at the same level. So if I just go under file here and I say new folder, this will create a new folder. I'm going to name it lib and this is where I'm going to put the exact files I need for my CPB. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on lib complete to show all of my different files here that I just downloaded. And now I'm going to open up another window next to it and I'm going to navigate over to that empty lib folder that I just created. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy files from this complete folder into the LIB folder. And I'm going to drag a certain set of files, or actually I shouldn't say drag, I'm going to copy a certain set of files from lib complete into lib. And the files that I need, I've actually got listed in our CircuitPython setup doc. 
So if we scroll down, we can see the names of them here, or here's a screenshot of them. And so you're gonna to wanna to find these folders here, the Adafruit folders named BLE, Bluefruit Connect, Bus Device, Circuit Playground, Fancy LED, and Motor. I position these two folders on the desktop so that I can drag from one into another and still look at the file names in the Google Doc behind. So now I'm gonna to scroll to find Adafruit underscore BLE. I'm gonna hold down the command key on my Mac. On Windows, I think it's the control key. While I'm holding down that key, I'm gonna click on the next folder, Adafruit underscore Bluefruit underscore connect. Keep holding down command, click on Adafruit bus device, click on Adafruit circuit playground, click on Adafruit fancy LED, and scroll down for one more folder, Adafruit underscore motor. And then I'm going to copy. So I'm going to do a Command C or on Windows a Control C. And when I click over into my empty lib folder here, I'm just going to paste in with a con Command V on the Mac, Control V in Windows. And this is going to make a copy of just those files that I've highlighted. And now I'm just going to click on the last three files here. So without touching any keys on the keyboard, I'm going to click on this file here that says Adafruit underscore LIS3DH. Once I've clicked to highlight it, I'm going to hold down either my Command or Control key on Windows, Command on the Mac. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find at the very end, I'll see NeoPixel, MPY, keep holding down Control or Command, and click Simple.io. Then I'm going to copy with a Command C or Control C. I'm going to head over to the Lib folder and I'm going to paste these last three files in there. Now I've got everything I need in my Lib folder, so I can copy this folder over to my Circuit Playground Bluefruit and I'll be ready to work with Python. And now make sure that your Circuit Playground Bluefruit is plugged in. Now find your LIB folder that you just copied those files into, and then drag your LIB folder into CircuitPy. That'll put it right on your CPB. It'll copy the files over for you. If it asks to replace them, just say it's okay to replace them. If you click on CircuitPy, you should see the files that you've copied over in there. Why don't you go ahead and do that and just make sure that you've got everything in your LIB folder. It looks good. It's got those files that you want. And if it's got that, then we're ready to install the Moo editor and we'll be ready to code. So in the same way that Excel lets us work with spreadsheets and Word lets us work with documents, Moo is gonna let us create Python programs. Now Moo is free, you can find it at the website codewith.moo. I'm gonna click on download. Now be careful, some students in class were clicking on this alpha stuff. That's not what you want. If you have Windows, you wanna click on 64-bit. If you want to have Mac, you wanna click on download. So I'm gonna click on download and I'm gonna save it to the desktop. So after it saves, I'm going to head over to the desktop. I'm going to double click on my DMG. You'll have an equivalent that you can do for Windows as well. And the installation should be pretty standard if you've installed stuff on your computer before. So on the Mac, what you get is on the left hand side, an icon that you're supposed to drag over into the applications folder. What I want to do now, you want to be a little bit careful here. I noticed some students in class were making a mistake where they were launching Moo by double clicking on this big icon. That's not what you want to do. You want to click and drag from the Moo editor into applications. And I'll speed this video up to the end of the install. And what happens once this is copied over is it's put a copy of the Moo Editor in my Applications folder. So again, do not double click on Moo Editor. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this window because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to throw away the DMG file because I don't need that anymore either. That's just my installation file. So now if I go over and I click on my Applications folder, I can see I've got all my apps in here. But if I type in Moo, I can see I've got Moo Editor here. And what I'm also going to do is I like to put things in my dock. So for Mac users, you know, feel free to go ahead and do this. I'm just going to drag my Moo editor right there. So now I'm going to launch Moo for the first time. I'm just clicking on in the dock. You'll get a message maybe that says you've downloaded it from the internet. You sure you want to open? I'll click open. Now the first time that you launch Moo, it's going to ask you to select the mode. Click on Adafruit Circuit Python and click OK. Then in the lower right hand corner, it'll say Adafruit to confirm you're all set up. I'm going to expand my window and ready to write code.